Hey, thanks for coming. Well, I have a treat for you tonight. This is in the story of Ashista's Yoga, the story of Leela. Ashista makes a promise that if you come to understand the teachings in here, you will be realized. So, it's a tall order. So what, after the introduction, the very first story is the story of Leela. Why is this so important? Because it talks about different lives. How one dies, what death is like, how one gets reborn, and all of this is unreal. So let's get started. We've got a lot to do. Okay. O oh, Rama, even if from the waking state experience there is no materiality in the object seen in a dream, so, while dreaming, the objects appear to be solid. This world appears to be material, yet in reality is pure consciousness. What a statement. It says that the dream state is the same as the waking state. There is no difference. And this story goes on to show how true that is. So I'm just sort of picking out the highlights of the story. This is to increase your interest in getting the book and reading the stories for yourself. To make this all crystal clear, O Rama, I shall nar narrate to you the story of Mandapa. Pray, listen attentively. Okay, there is a king. I love these stories. There's always kings. Forget the commoners. <laughs> His name was Padma. He was perfect in every respect. He had a wife by the name of Leela. This is the heroine, the heroine of the story. She was highly accomplished and very beautiful. Okay. She was as sweet as honey. She was highly devoted to her husband, Padma, and knew how to serve him and to please him. Had an ideal life. One day the queen Leela thought, The most handsome king is my husband, is dearer to me than even my own life. What should I do in order that he and I may live forever, enjoying the pleasures of life? I shall immediate under, immediately undertake such austerities as the holy ones would suggest, in order that I may fulfill my ambition. She sought the counsel of the holy ones. The holy ones said to her, we don't know who they are, but they're holy, of course. O oh, Queen, austerities or penance, repetition of mantras, and a disciplined life will surely bestow upon you all that is possible for one to attain in this world. But physical immortality is not possible of attainment in this world. Well, we'll see some exceptions later. The queen pondered his advice and decided, if I should die before my husband, then I shall attain self-knowledge and be free from sorrow. But if he should leave before me, then I shall so strive now as to obtain a boon from the gods that his jiva does not leave our palace, his soul. 
I shall be happy to live in it in the knowledge that he is always with me. Wow. So she decided to pray to Saraswati, the goddess of learning. She didn't discuss it with her with her husband. Saraswati appeared before her and granted her boons of her choice. Leela prayed, O oh, Divine Mother, grant me two boons. When my husband departs from his body, let his jiva remain in the palace. And two, whenever I pray to you, let me see you. Hey, and then I could ask for more boons. <laughs> she was pretty smart. <laughs> Sarah spotted these two boons and disappeared. Time inexorably passed. King Padma, who was mortally wounded on the battlefield, died in the palace. Queen Leela was inconsolable with grief. When she was thus sunk in grief, an ethereal voice spoke to her. The ethereal voice of Saraswati said, My child, cover the king's de dead body with flowers. Then it will not decay, and he will not leave the palace. Leela did so, yet she was not satisfied. She felt like a wealthy man who had the wealth, who had been tricked into poverty-stricken existence. Her king was dead. He lived in the palace, but she couldn't enjoy being with him, was what she wanted. She invoked Goddess Saraswati, who appeared before her and said, Saraswati said, My child, why do you grieve? Sorrow like water and mirage and his illusion. Leela asked her, Pray, tell me where my husband is. Okay, so now we start into it. Okay? There are three types of space. Psychological space, the physical space, and the infinite space of consciousness. So space is no longer the same undifferentiated. By intense meditation on this infinite space of consciousness, you can see and experience the presence of one, like your husband, whose body is that infinite space, even though you do not see him here. That is, the infinite space exists in the middle when finite intelligence travels from one place to another, for it also is infinite. If you give up all thoughts, you will here and now attain to the realization of oneness with all. Normally, only he who has realized the utter non-existence of the universe can experience this but you will do so by my grace. So, Leela goes to that infinite space and she goes to where Padma is now a king. Okay. She saw Padma surrounded. Okay, his new name was Vidaratha. There she saw the king once again on a throne, surrounded by many kings who adored him, by many sages and holy men who chanted the Vedas, by many women, by, by armed forces. She saw them, but they did not see her, as one's thought forms are visible only to oneself, not to others. She saw that the king had a youthful body. She also saw in his court very many members of the court of King Padma. Many of them, not all. She wondered, are they all dead too? Again, so she was in this state of infinite consciousness, the space of infinite consciousness. 
Again, by the grace of goddess Saraswati, Leela came back to her palace where Padma, the king, was. And, and she came back to the palace and saw her attendants asleep. She woke them and asked them to request the members of the royal car to assemble at once. Messengers were quickly dispatched to summon all. And very soon, the royal court of King Padma was teaching, teaming with the ministers, sages, civil servants, <coughs> relations, and friends. Seeing them all there, Leela rejoiced. Well, they weren't dead then, were they? But now a question comes up. Who was the real ministers and courtiers that were in both places? So her question, which of the, but which of these is real, which is the reflection? I must find out from Saraswati. She adored Saraswati and saw her seated in front of her. So she asked her, which is real and which is the reflection? So now Saraswati asked a trick question. Tell me first, what do you consider and what unreal? That I am here and you are in front of me, this I consider real. That region in which my husband is now, that I consider unreal. Well, she's just going by what she sees. Okay. So Sarah's what he says, okay. How can the unreal be the effect of the real? So if that was unreal, that can't cause this which is real. The effect is the cause. There is no essential difference. Even in the case of a pot which is able to hold water where, where as its cause, clay, the, you know, the soft, unbaked clay, cannot. This difference is due to cooperative causes. What was the material cause of your husband's birth? For only material effects are produced by material causes. Okay, so now this is just a prelude. Hence, when you find no immediate cause for an effect, then simply, surely the cause existed in the past. And call that memory. Memory is like space, empty. All creation here is the effect of that em em emptiness. And hence, this particular creation is empty also. Even as the birth of your husband is an illusion, illusionary product of memory, I see all this, this reality, as the illusionary and unreal effect of imagination. So you're just imagining and you're looking at me. Now, we're coming to a very important In pure consciousness, in a corner of the mind of the Creator, there was a dilapidated shrine covered with a blue dome. It had 14 worlds for rooms. The three divisions of space were holes in it. The sun was the light. If there was a little anthills, the cities, the little piles of earth, mountains, the little pools of water, the ocean. This is creation, the universe. In a very small corner of it lived a holy man with his wife and children. He was healthy and free from fear. He performed his religious and social duties well. This man was known Vashista, and his wife was Arundhati. They were different from the Vashista and Arundhati, but Vashista himself. So this is another sort of coincidence, synchronicity. One day when that holy man was seated on the top of a hill, he 
He saw at the foot of the hill a colorful procession on the move with a king riding a stately elephant, followed by an army and other royal paraphernalia. Looking at this, a wish arose in the heart of the holy man. Indeed, the life of a king is rich and full of delight and glory. When will I ride a royal elephant like that and be followed by an army like this? Well, this was his last thought that he had. He didn't die right then. Okay, sometime after this, the holy man grew old and death overtook him. His wife, who was highly devoted to him, prayed to me and asked for the same boon that you asked for, that her husband's spirit shall not leave her house. I granted her that boon. So that holy man was an ethereal being on account of the power of his constant wish during the previous lifespan. He became a mighty king and ruled over a great empire which resembles heaven or earth. He was excellent in all respects. This was the power of the last thought. He was indeed the full moon of righteousness. Arunadati had also given up her body and attained reunion with her husband. It is eight days since she has died. Leah, it is that same holy man who is now your husband, the king. And you are the same Arundhati who was his wife. So Leah is the reincarnation of Arundhati. On account of ignorance and delusion, all this seems to play, take place in the infinite consciousness. Then she says to Leela, you may regard all this as true or false. Leela couldn't believe it. Oh, goddess, all this seems so strange and incredible to me. It is like saying a huge elephant is bound in the center of a mustard seed or that an atom a mosquito fought with a lion, or that there is a mountain in a lotus pond. Saraswati said, My dear, I do not utter falsehood, but I am only telling the truth. The memory of the past is hidden, and you too have risen again. Death is but waking from a dream. Birth, which is, arises from a wish, is no more real than the wish, like waves in a mirage. Okay. To understand that completely, to know it completely in your life, is to become realized. Saraswati continued, Leela, your house, you and I are all this pure consciousness, not else. Your house is, was itself in the house of the holy man Vashista. In the space of his jiva existed the rivers and mountains and so on. Even after the quote unquote creation of all this in the holy man's house, it remained as it was before. Indeed, in every atom there are worlds within worlds. Well, Okay, or that, so here's Leela's statement. Or that in an atom, a mosquito fought with a lion. Hey, no big deal. So, Leela is still wondering. Oh, goddess, you said it was only eight, to go, eight days ago that the holy man had died. And yet my husband and I have lived for a long time. How can you reconcile this discrepancy? Well, here it comes, folks. Oh, Leela, just as space does not have a fixed span, time does not have a fixed span either. Even as in dream there is birth, death, and relationship all a very short time, and even as a lover feels that a single night without his beloved is an epoch, the jiva thinks of experienced and non-experienced objects, 
in the twinkling of an eye. So Leela, in order to convince herself, asked to see the original house of Lashista. So she's talking about Brahma and how he has infinite consciousness. The infinite consciousness is forever an infinite consciousness. So even this reality is a part of the infinite consciousness. You think your life is real? It is only as real as the infinite consciousness. Saraswati said, O oh, Leela, give up this form of yours and attain the pure spiritual insight. For only Brahman can really see or realize Brahman. My body is made of pure light, pure consciousness. Your body is not, just like your body. You think it's real, but it's actually a body of light. But as long as you imagine that it's real, it stays on this plane. But if you attain the body of light, you will immediately see the holy man's house. Affirm to yourself, I shall leave my body here and take a body of light. With that body, like the scent of incense, I shall go to the house of the holy man. Even as water mixes with water, you will become one with the field of consciousness. So if you're one of the field of consciousness, of course you could see the dreamlike state inside that field. Any dreamlike state. Okay, so Leela accomplishes acquiring the body of light. And these are also called the wisdom bodies. So they travel around in their wisdom bodies. Holding each other's hands, Saraswati and Leela slowly ascended to the far distant scenes in space. This space was intensely pure and totally empty. They saw great yogis endowed with all auspicious qualities. They saw the abode of the creators, the abode of Shiva and others. Like a couple of mosquitoes, they roamed all these planes. Okay, so you're ready for another one? Okay. So they roam around for a while. Then they went to the holy man's house. The whole family was in mourning. On account of their grief, the house itself had a depressing atmosphere. By the practice of the yoga of pure wisdom, Leela had acquired this faculty by which her Thought instantly materialized. She wished, these my relations should see me and Saraswati as if we are ordinary woman folk. So immediately they appeared so to the mourning family. But the two ladies were of supernatural radiance which dispelled the gloom that pervaded the house. The eldest son of the departed holy couple welcomed the two ladies, taking them to be two angels of the forest. He said to them, O oh, angels of the forest, surely you have come here to relieve us of our grief and our bereavement. For such is the nature of divinity, they are eager to relieve the distress of others. This was her son talking to Leela. The two ladies asked the young man, Tell us the cause of your sorrow, which seems to afflict all these people here. 
But ladies, in this very house, there lived a pious man and his devoted wife. Recently, they died. Hearing this, Leela laid, laid her hand on the young man's head. Instantly, he was relieved of his sorrow. Seeing this, all the others were relieved, also relieved of sorrow. Rama asks, why is that Leela did not appear to her own son as his real mother? Okay. Rama, he who has realized the unreality of material substances, sees only the one undivided consciousness everywhere. So Leela didn't even see him as her son anymore. Because that was a material substance. He who has realized the truth that Brahman, the self, etc., are all one infinite consciousness, unto him, where is son, friend, wife, etc.? Even her laying her hand on the young man's head was a spontaneous expression of Brahman's grace. Okay, so Leela asked Saraswati, how is that we were seen by this family of mine here and we were not seen by my husband who was ruling the kingdom when we visited him? Saraswati said, then you are still clinging to your notion. I am Leela, and now you have overcome that body consciousness. Till the consciousness of duality is completely dispelled, you cannot act in the infinite consciousness. You cannot even understand it. Even as one standing in the sun does not know the coolness of the shade of a tree. But now, if you go to your husband, you will be able to deal with him as before. Okay, so Leela says, Okay, oh divinity, it was here itself that my husband was the holy man and I was his wife. Here again I was his queen, here he died, and here he, again he rules now. Hurry, take to me where I can see him. Okay, here's an important point. Leela, you and your husband have been through many incarnations, three of which you now know. So this is the value of knowing past lives. In this incarnation, the king has slipped deep into the snare of worldliness, and he thinks, I am the Lord, I am strong, I am happy, etc. Though from the spiritual standpoint, the whole universe is experienced. From the physical point of view, millions of miles separate the planes. In the infinite consciousness, in every atom of it, Universes come and go like particles of dust in a beam of sunlight that shines through a hole in the roof. These come and go like ripples on the ocean. Leela reminisced, O oh, divinity, since emerging as a reflection in the infinite consciousness, I have had 800 births. Today I see this. Rama asked, okay, uh, when he's listening to this, Holy Sir, how was, he's asking Vashista, <coughs> how was it possible for the two ladies to travel to distant galaxies in the universe, and how did they overcome the numerous barriers on the way? Vashista replied, Oh Rama, where is universe? Where are galaxies? Where are barriers? The two ladies remained in the queen's inner apartment. It was there that the holy man Vashista was ruling as King Vidurasa. It was he who was King Padma IV before. All this happened in pure space. There is no universe, no distance, no barriers.
So they traveled. They went into They traveled uh, to the summit of the huge mountain. So they soon they reached the summit, for their will becomes the adventine, whose consciousness is pure and unveiled. There, Leo saw that this creation was enveloped by layers of water, fire, air, and space, and beyond that, beyond that was pure consciousness. This supreme infinite consciousness is pure, peaceful, free from illusion, establishing its own glory. In that, Leela saw countless creations. They went back or appeared in the room or the inner apartment of the palace where the corpse of the king lay buried under a heap of flowers. Remember? Back a while. An imp uh, incorporeal voice told her to put flowers on top of the king. Okay, so she was back there. There arose in Leela an intense wish to behold her husband's other life. Instantly, she broke through the summit of the universe and entered into the realm where her husband now ruled. At the same time, when they appeared there, a mighty king who ruled over the Sindhu region was laying siege to her husband's kingdom. As the two ladies were coursing this face above the battlefield, they encountered countless celestials who had assembled there to witness the battle and the exploits of the great heroes. So, at the, turning the page, at an evening set in, the husband, Leela's husband had a council with his ministers concerning the events of the mor morning, and then he went to sleep. The two ladies left the place where they stood watching the fierce battle and traveling like a breath air, of air. They entered into the apartments where the king was asleep. Holy One, the body be, seems to be so large and heavy. How does this enter through a minute hole? O oh, Rama, it is indeed po impossible for one who is rooted in the idea that he's a physical body to pass through a subtle hole or two. It is the innermost conviction. I am the body which is obstructed thus in its movement, that in fact manifests as such of obstruction when the former is absent. Okay. Okay, the former is, I am the body which is obstructed, thus in its movement. If that's absence, you can travel anywhere to anything. Okay. There's a complete description here now of how you die, how you are reborn. Okay, so the two ladies entered the apartment of the king like two divinities. Okay. And the king awoke and worshipped their lotus like feet with flowers. Saraswati wished that his minister should acquaint the world with the king's ancestry. By her will, the minister awoke. Okay. Saraswati blessed Vidyaratha by laying her hand on his head and inspired him to recollect the facts of his own previous lives. Instantly, the king remembered everything and asked Saraswati, O oh goddess, how is it that though it is hardly one day since I day, died, it seems that I have lived in this body a full seventy years. 
how is it I remember all things that happened when I was young in this lifespan? Okay, so in a twinkling of an eye, everything was created, including the memories. So, just to tell you, you know it says in the Bible that God created everything in seven days, and we have that uh, the statement from the scientists that the it's been four, four billion years since the Earth was created. Well. Here you go, here's the explanation for that on one level. Now, okay, so, now, there's the appeal, appearance of Leela too. Wow. Okay. So Vidaratha is told that he will die. And so he asked to go with his daughter. Um, when I die, I shall go from here just as one goes from one dream to another in sleep. Pray and grant that my minister and my virgin daughter may go with me. Saraswati granted his prayer. O king, Saraswati said, you shall die in this war and then you will regain your previous kingdom. After your death in this body, you will come over to the previous city with your, doctor and your daughter and your ministers. We too shall now go as we came, and all of you will, of course, follow us in due course. For the nature of the motion of a horse, an elephant, and a camel is different. In the meantime, the queen arrived there. This is Leela, too. The lady in waiting announced her to the king. She said, Your Majesty, all the other ladies of the harem have been violently dragged away by the enemy. From this indescribable calamity that has befallen us, only Your Majesty can redeem us. The king, Vidaratha, vowed to Saraswati and excused himself. I shall myself go to the battlefront, O goddess. To deal with the enemy, and this my wife will wait upon you during that time. The enlightened Leela, the one that came with Saraswati, was amazed to see that the queen was a complete replica of herself. She asked Saraswati, O oh, divinity, how is it she is exactly what I am? Whatever I was in my own youth, she is now. What is the secret of this? Also, all these ministers, etc., are here are the same that were there in our palace. If they are but a reflection or objects of our fancy, are they sentient? Are they also endowed with consciousness? Saraswati replied, O oh, Leela, whatever vision arises with one, within oneself, that is immediately experienced. Consciousness as subject becomes itself the object of knowledge. When in conscious the image of the world that arises at that very instant, it becomes so. Time, space, duration, and objectivity, objectivity do not arise from matter. What a powerful statement. For then they would be material. What is reflected in one's consciousness shines outside also. Powerful statements. What is regarded as the real objective world experienced in the waking state is no more real than that experienced during sleep or dream. 
During sleep, the world does not exist. And during the waking state, the dream does not exist. Even so, death contradicts life. While living, death is also non-existent. And in death, life is non-existent. Because that which holds together either experience is absence in the other. Wow. If you really understood this, what this means, if you can somehow alter time or space, duration or objectivity, whatever you alter it to becomes real. One cannot say that either is real or unreal, but one can only say that their substratum alone is real. The substratum is consciousness. The universe exists in Brahman only as a word, an idea. This gives an entirely different meaning to the beginning of the Bible. In the beginning was the word, the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The universe exists in Brahman only as a word, an idea. It is neither real nor unreal. Just a snake in the rope is neither real or unreal. Even so is the existence of the Jiva. Well, that's you. You're neither real nor unreal. This jiva experiences its own, its own wishes. It fancies that it experienced what it had experienced before. And some others are new experience. They are similar at times and dissimilar at other times. When you go back and find your past lives, you'll see how true this is. Okay, such is the nature of these ministers. Know that this is replied to Leela's question. Even so, this Leela exists as the product of the reflection in consciousness. Even so are you, me, and all others. Know this. Know it on an intellectual level? Yes. Know it on an emotional level? Yes. Rest in peace. Now, Leela too pipes up and says to Saraswati, Oh, divinity, I used to, can you imagine what Leela is thinking as she's watching herself ask these questions? Oh, divinity, I used to worship Saraswati, and she used to appear to me in my dreams. You look exactly like her. I presume that you are Saraswati. I humbly beg of you to grant me a boon. Okay. When my husband dies on the battlefield, may I accompany him to whichever realms he goes in this very body of mine? This is, sounds familiar, doesn't it? Saraswati replied, Oh, dear lady, you have worshipped me for a long time with intense devotion. Therefore, I grant you the boon sought by you. First, Layla, the, first, the enlightened Layla says to Saraswati, Truly your words never fail. Your wish always comes true. Pray tell me why you did not allow me to travel from one plane to conscious to another with the same body. Saraswati replies, My dear Leela, I do not really do anything to anyone. Every jiva earns its own state by its own deeds. I am merely the deity presiding over the intelligence of every being. I am the power of its consciousness and its life force. Whatever form the energy of the living being takes within itself, that alone comes to fruition in course of time. You long for liberation, and you obtained it. 
Okay. You may consider the fruit of your austerity your worship of the deity, but it is conscience alone that bestows that fruit upon you. Even as the fruit that seems to fall from the sky really falls from the tree. So Vidurapa goes off to fight, and he knows he's going to die, but he thinks he's in command of the situation. Okay, the second Leela, Leela 2, says, O oh goddess, please tell me why it is, though we are blessed by you, my husband cannot win the battle. Saraswati replied, No doubt, I was adored by King Vatra Viduratha for a considerable time, but he did not pray for victory in battle. Being the consciousness that dwells in the understanding of every person, I bestow upon that person that which he seeks. So be careful what you ask for. Whatever it be that the person asks of me, I bestow upon him that fruit. It is but natural that fire gives you heat. He had asked for liberation, and he shall attain liberation. On the other hand, the king of Sindhu, who is battling with Vidurathad at this moment, worshipped me and prayed for victory in battle. Hence the king Vidurathad will be slain in battle and he will rejoin you both, and in the course of time will attain liberation. This king of Sindhu will win the war and will rule the country as the victorious monarch. But wait, there's more later on about the very same thing. Okay, Vidyaratha is slain. Seeing Vidyaratha fall, the second Leela, this is the queen, fell down unconscious. The, second, the first Leela said to Saraswati, this is really way out there, folks, isn't it? Oh, God, I see this my husband is about to give up the ghost. Saraswati said to the, the enlightened Leela, dear one, all this terrible war, this destruction and death, are all real as a dream, for there is neither a kingdom nor the earth. All this took place in the house of the holy man Vashista on top of the hill. This palace and this battlefield and all the rest of it is nowhere but the inner apartments of your own palace. In fact, the entire universe is there. For when the house, within the house of the holy man is the world of the king Padma. And within the palace of that king, in that world, is all that you have seen here. All this is mere fancy, hallucination. What is, is the sole reality, which is neither created nor destroyed. It is that infinite consciousness that is perceived by the ignorant as the universe. The other Leela who fell down unconscious has already reached that world in which your husband Padma's body is laying. Leela asked, oh, oh Goddess, tell me, how did she go there already and what are the people there telling her? Saraswati replied, just as both of you are the fancied objects of the, of the king, even so the king himself are dream objects. One who knows this gives up looking for objects of perception. In the infinite conscious, we have created each other in our fancy. The other youthful Leela was indeed yourself. She worshipped me and prayed that she would never be widowed. Hence, before the king Vidaratha died, she left this place. Dear one, you are all individualized cosmic consciousness, but I am the cosmic consciousness. 
and I make all these things happen. So Leela, too, she passed through the regions of the gods, and Brahma, etc., entered the city in the palace with which the body lay. But at last, when she looked around, she could not see her, her daughter, who had disappeared mysteriously. She had traveled with Leela from the battlefield. She recognized the king as her husband and thought that having died a glorious death on the battlefield, he had ascended to a hero's heaven. She thought, by the grace of Saraswati, I have physically reached this place. That was her boon. I am the most blessed among persons. She began to fan the king's body. The first Leela said, see, we have to keep them straight. Seeing what did the servants of the king do? Saraswati answered, the king, the servants of the royal house, and all the rest of them are only infinite consciousness. However, since the substratum is the reflection of the infinite consciousness, which is real, and since there is a conviction of the order of fanciful creation, they recognize one another. The husband says, she is my wife, and the wife says, he is my husband. Okay. So, Sarah Spotty tells the first Leela about life and death. Okay. So how it travels from place to place and thinks it's alive somewhere else. All these things happen. She's talking about how things manifest. When that intelligence, the cosmic intelligence, which is part of the infinite consciousness, fancied itself to be a tree, it became a tree. Or a rock, it became a rock. Or grass, it became grass. There is no distinction between the sentient and the insentient, being inert and intelligent. So everything is filled with the consciousness, infinite consciousness. And this is just the first story. Okay. Let us return to the palace of King Padma. As I said, Leela and Saraswati re-entered the beautiful palace in the room in which the embalmed body of Padma had been kept. All the royal attendants were fast asleep. There, seated near the body of King Padma, they saw the second Leela, who was devoutly fanning the king. The first Leela and Saraswati saw her, but she did not see them. It was Rama asked this question. It was said that the first leader had temporarily left her body near the king and traveled with Saraswati in an ethereal body. But now the first leader's body is not mentioned at all. When the first leader became enlightened, the egotistic fancy of her ethereal real being abandoned its links with the gross physical form. 
and it melted away like snow. Okay, so once you understand that you have an ethereal body and you can do things with it, Rama asks the question, Holy Sir, does a yogi's physical body then become an ethereal body? How many times have I told you, O Rama, yet you do not grasp it? This is really hard stuff. The ethereal body alone is, by persistent fancy, it appears to be linked to a physical body. Just as when an ignorant man who thinks he is a physical body dies and the body is created, has a subtle body, even so the yogi, on being enlightened while living, has an ethereal body. Enlightened Leela asks Saraswati, O oh Goddess, from the time I sat here in contemplation till now, how much time has elapsed? Dear one, Saraswati replied. It, it is a month since you entered into contemplation. During the first 15 days, your body, on account of the heat generated by pranayama, became vaporized. Then it became like a dry leaf and fell down. Then it became rigid and cold. The ministers then thought you had died of your own accord and cremated that body. Now, on account of your own wish, you appear in your ethereal body. In you, there are no memories of past life or latent tendencies brought forward from previous incarnation. For when the intelligence is established in the conviction of its ethereal nature, the body is forgotten. Even as in youth one forgets life as a fetus. Today is the 31st day and you are here. Come us, let us reveal ourselves to this other Leela. Okay, so they, this, the second Leela tells how she got there. And uh, Vrindaratha lying here asleep in a garden of flowers. I thought he was fatigued from battle, and without disturbing him, I fanned him. Saraswati immediately let Vrindaratha's jiva enter the body. The king at once awoke from slumber. The two Leelas bowed to him. He looks at Leela, he looks at the younger Leela, who's his wife, he looks at Saraswati. The king asked the enlightened Leela, who are you? Who is she? And where has she come? The enlightened Leela said, uh, Lord, I am your wife in your previous incarnation and your constant companion, even as a word and its meaning are constant companions. This Leela is your other wife. She is my own reflection, created by me for your pleasure. And she who is seated on yonder golden throne is the goddess Saraswati herself. She is present here on account of your great good fortune. Hearing this, the king sat up and saluted Saraswati. Saraswati blessed him with long life, wealth, and so on, and enlightenment. After granting the desired boon to the king, Saraswati vanished from that spot. The king and the queen fondly embraced each other. The royal attendants who were guarding the king's body woke up and rejoiced that the king had come back to life. Vishista concludes the story by saying, This is the story of Lilo Rama, which I have narrated in detail for you. Contemplation of this story removed from your mind the least faith in the reality of what is perceived. Are you getting it? If nothing is what it seems. You may say that what appears to be is the creation of Maya, but then Maya itself is not real. Rama said, what a, Lord, what a grand vision of the ultimate truth you have given me. Now, well, he's got more. <laughs> 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 
Well, holy one, Vashista, there is an insatiable hunger in me for the nectar of your enlightening words. Pray, explain to me the mystery of time. In the story of Lita, sometime a whole lifetime is spent in eight days, sometimes in one month. I am puzzled. Are there in different time scales of different universe? Rusista replied. See, he knows he still hasn't got it. O oh, Rama, whatever one thinks one, within oneself, in his own intelligence, that alone is experienced by him. Even nectar is experienced by him who fancies it is poison. Friends become enemies and enemies become friends depending on one's inner attitude. A lifetime of Nani was but an hour and a half to Brahma. Brahma's lifetime is a day of Vishnu. Vishnu's lifespan is Shiva's day. But to the sage whose consciousness has overcome limitations, there is neither day nor night. Okay, so there's quite a bit talking about how to perceive all this. And Rama asks, what is God? Talking about the jiva. When the mind perceives duality, then there is both duality and its counterpart, counterpart, which is unity. When the mind drops the perception of duality, there is neither duality nor unity. So Rama asked this question at the end of the story of Leela. Holy sir, sir, if ignorance is non-existence in truth, then why should one even bother about liberation or even about inquiry? Vashista replies, Rama, that thought should arise in its own time, not now. Flowers bloom and fruits ripen in their own times. The cosmic jiva utters only by pure wills creates the various objects. Just as the creator Brahma was willed into being, even so is a worm brought into being. Because the latter is caught up in impurity, its action is trivial. The distinction is illusionary. In truth, there is no creation and no division at all. So that's the story of Leela. I trust that this will encourage you to take up the study of the Shistas Yoga. There are many interpolations as you go along and this story comes back in a much different context. And even the Rama's question is answered. So I trust you will pick up this and begin to acquire a taste for the supreme, supreme knowledge. Thank you.